Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at our Moths program and how we can go ahead and code trace to find any bugs that may be in our program. So what we're going to need to do is first go to My Documents at the top of your screen. And once you get to that My Documents page, you're going to see that there should be a link to your code tracing chart that we're going to be using for this activity. So here you can see that we've already broken the code down into individual lines of code. We also have our objective and what bugs we may or may not find within our program. Once we're done, we'll go ahead down at the bottom and we're going to add our corrected buggy code to our screen. Now, what we're going to need to go ahead first and do is make sure that we import that Moss hex file into our make code learning environment. So we can go ahead and click on that makecode.microbit.org and that will open up that learning environment. Now, if you haven't already imported the Moss hex file in, now would be a good time to do so. In order to go ahead and do that, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page and we're going to look to find our moths.hex file. We can do that by simply clicking on download and that's going to download that into your download manager. Once you get that into your download manager, we can go back to make code and from there we're going to go ahead and click on that import button. Once we click on import, we're going to want to go ahead and import the file and from there we'll go ahead and choose our file and again we'll find that in our download manager and you will find that under your recent folder. Now once you go ahead and find that folder, you want to go ahead and open that folder and then from there it's going to ask us to go ahead and select go ahead. Once we do that, it should open our moss hex file for us to look at. So again, we're going to want to observe what happens once the program starts and we need to try to understand what is actually going on with our program. So right off the bat, we can see that we have this event handler, which is an on a button press, which means really nothing should be triggered until we go ahead and hit the A button. And then it looks like something is going to repeat five times and it looks like we have some kind of guy doing a jumping jack. So let's go ahead and hit the A button on our emulator just to see what happens. And as you can see, he's doing these jumping jacks five times. It looks like he's ending on that second move. So it looks like the program works, but we're not entirely sure if that is what the program is supposed to do. So again, we need to go ahead and look at those comments to see just exactly what the objective of this program is. So in order to do that, we're going to go to our event handler on button A press. And when we do that, we can go and expand that comment to see what is happening. So here it's telling me my objective for this program is to make the microbit person do 10 jumping jacks when the B button is pressed. So right off the bat, I can see pretty much that there's two problems that we're going to have here. One, my event handler is using an on button A press and the objective for this is a button B press. So that may be one of the bugs in our program. The second thing we have is that it looks like our loop is only repeating five times and my objective is 10 times. Now, one thing to keep in mind about bugs in a program, just because a program works doesn't mean that there aren't any bugs. In this case, the program worked just as it was written, button A was pressed, and the guy did five jumping jacks. However, the bugs for this one is simply that it's not doing what it's supposed to or meeting that objective. So let's go ahead and highlight that comment. And again, we'll copy that by hitting control C. And we're going to go into our code tracing chart and under my objective, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. So now we know that the objective of this program is to make the microbit person do 10 jumping jacks when the B button is pressed. From here, we can go ahead and break down each of those event handlers. So let's go back to make code. And again, here we can see that the program should be started or triggered when the B button is pressed, not the A button. So for our first bug, we're going to go ahead and type in the outcome here is the program begins when the B button is pressed. And obviously that did not work and we can even go back and test that out. But if we go back to that emulator and we hit that B button right off the bat, nothing happened. So we know that that's our first bug and we can simply correct that bug by hitting that little drop down and changing that from a button A to a button B. Now again, if we go ahead and test that and hit the button B, we're gonna go ahead and do those jumping jacks. Now again, our second command or our second loop here is that we should have a jumping jack sequence of 10 times. So here we can see that we're only repeating five times. So again, we're gonna go ahead and copy that comment we can go ahead and add that to our code tracing chart and in this case 
it is repeating 10 times, we only have it repeating five. So again, we found another bug in the program. So from here, we can go back to make code and we're simply gonna go ahead and change that five to a 10. Now we need to check this, make sure that our LEDs are doing what they're supposed to as well. So here we have our first jumping jack position, which that looks like that should be our first jumping jack position. So we can go ahead and paste that guy in there and we can say yes. And then we can go back and check out that second position. And it does tell us that that's the second position. So we can copy the second jumping jack position and paste that in and we can say yes as well. So now if everything works correctly, we should be able to go and hit the B button. And here we should see our jumping jack guy do 10 jumping jacks. So let's give this a try. And there you have, there's your 10 jumping jacks when the B button was pressed. Now, before we go ahead and finish this up, one of the things we need to do is make sure in that code tracing chart, we go ahead and paste our code, our final code or corrected code, as well as what the bugs are. So we identify that there are two bugs in our program. So bug number one was that the program began when the A button was pressed not the B button. We were able to fix that pretty easily by just switching that event handler to an on B button pressed rather than an on A. And the next one is that my repeat loop was set for five times instead of 10. So now I was able to identify both bugs in the program and correct them as well. So again, the last step for this is to go and add that correct code. And again, we can do that by simply right clicking. You're gonna wanna go ahead and select snapshot. And if you're on a Chromebook, down in the bottom right hand corner, you should see copy to clipboard and just click on that. And from there, we can go back into that code tracing chart and you can hit control V to paste it in. Or if you're on a PC, you can just simply drag that image in. One last thing, let's just go ahead and resize it. And let's make sure we have everything correct. So we can see that here we have the on A press versus the on B. We've changed my repeat loop from five to 10 times, and I still have my jumping jack position set to first and second position. So there you have your MOS program and how to correct your buggy code.